At the moment, there are no nuclear weapons on the territory of Belarus, Ukrainian Reserve Major General Viktor Yagun stated on air at Radio NV. Now they have prepared the base to receive it. It is completely ready. They have completely updated it. It is not far from Minsk. What is characteristic is that this distance is also quite close to the border with Ukraine. If you really want to, you can get there even with the means that we have. But at the same time, this base has been restored. There is security there, not only Belarusian, but also Russian. Whether there are tactical nuclear weapons there, no one confirms. But everyone understands that according to the protocol, how it should be used, the Belarusians clearly do not have access to it, Yagun said. He also commented on the CIA's information that Russia could use nuclear weapons in 2022 when the defense forces were conducting a counter-offensive operation. In particular, Yagun explained where Western intelligence agencies get information about Russia's preparations for such operations. You need to have sources in the environment where nuclear scientists work. You need to have sources who serve in the strategic deterrence forces. And you certainly need to have sources in the government which ensures the functioning of this mechanism. If there is such information, it is verified from different sources. They may have different access. But if it coincides in general, then this information is considered objective, Yagun added. Recently, CIA Director William Burns said that there was a real risk that Putin could use nuclear weapons against Ukraine in the 2022. He added that at the end of 2022, he met with the head of Russian intelligence, Narishkin, in Turkey, where he threatened consequences for a possible nuclear strike. Meanwhile, Interesting Engineering conducted a study and found that the US could destroy all of Russia and China's nuclear launch sites in two hours. The report noted that the US and its allies' advantage in weapons and strike capabilities could cause fear in Russia and China and could already be fueling an arms race. The Kursk offensive operation of the Ukrainian armed forces has sowed doubts among the Russian elite. This was stated by the heads of the US and UK intelligence services Bill Burns and Richard Moore, the Financial Times reports. Thus, the director of the American CIA, Burns, noted that the Kursk operation was a significant tactical achievement that raised the fighting spirit of the Ukrainians and exposed Russia's weaknesses. This has raised questions among the entire Russian elite among where this all is heading. The U.S. intelligence chief said, in turn, MI6 chief Moore said it was a typically brash and bold move by the Ukrainians to try to change the game. Earlier, President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the Kursk operation was a response to Russian plans to create a buffer zone on Ukrainian territory. It was carried out due to the shortage of long-range weapons in the defense forces. The operation of the Ukrainian defense forces in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation continues and the controlled zone may increase to 2,000 square kilometers, believes military political observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko. It seems to me, firstly, that the controlled zone will be increased. 
since the Glushkovsky district is literally asking to become part of this control zone. That is, the total area can be increased to 2,000 square kilometers. He explained his opinion on the air of the Freedom TV channel. The observer noted that the Russian command is currently unable to stabilize the line of combat. According to him, for this, the aggressor country needs more resources than are concentrated there. Therefore, they will continue to redeploy units from the combat zone in Ukraine, specifically to the Kursk region. He predicts. Kovalenko believes that the Glushkovsky district of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation will gradually come under the control of Ukrainian forces. The expansion to the north and east will be slower compared to what could happen in the Glushkovsky district. This is due to the fact that the bulk of the forces and resources of the Russian occupation forces of the Kursk group are concentrated in this region. And to the south of the Seam River, they have extremely limited capabilities to provide logistical support to units as well as to strengthen their units by redeploying from other directions and bridgeheads, the expert concluded.